Act 4. The Crossfield Day. Admin to the players rushing through the field, a very late Styles finds Scott in a crowd and hurries towards him. Scott, wait up, Styles said. You gotta hear this, Scott. I'm playing the first elimination, Styles. Can it wait, Styles? Just hold on. I overheard my dad on the phone. The fiber analysis report, report came back from LA and they found animal hairs on the body from the woods. Scott, Styles, I have to go. Styles, uh, you're not going to believe what animal, what animal was. But with this helmet on, Scott disappears in the crowd of other players rushing to the field, leaving Styles to say the next words to himself. Styles, it was a wolf. On the field, the coach shouts for the players. All right, gather around. Scott glances to the bleachers where students and parents sit to watch the special scrimmage. He spots Allison next to Lydia. He gives her a quick wave and smile. He holds up a hand and wave back. Coach, you got a question in my call? Scott, what? Coach, you have your hand raised. Scott, oh no, I was just nothing. Sorry. Coach, to the rest of the team. All right, you know how this goes. If you don't make the cut, you're most likely warming the bench the rest of the season. But make but make first string and you play. Your parents are proud. Your girlfriend loves you. Everything else is cream and cheese. Now show me what you got. The whistle blows and the games begin. The pace is fast and brutal. When the ball gets passed to Scott, Jackson comes right after him. A cross stick smashing down with his smacking down on his gloves. Scott tumbles forward and slams to the ground, kicking up dirt around him. The whistle stops the play. Jackson stands over Scott, cowling over him as he picks up his ball with his gloved hand. Teeth clenched behind his mask, Scott pushes himself off the ground. Coach gives the whistle a sharp blow starting the next game. Starting the next play, Scott and Scott and Jackson find themselves staring across from the field at each other to, to draw. Crouch down with their sticks waiting for the assistant coach to drop the ball. At the whistle, Scott moves with shocking speed, grabbing the ball right from under Jackson. At the bleachers, Scott style stands slowly moving to the sidelines to watch. Scott charges the length of the field. Defense lashes out with their sticks, but he par parries expertly. Jackson catches up and makes a furious stab at sealing the ball, then with then with defense con converging on him. Scott twists his lacrosse stick around, keeping the ball safely in the pocket while he literally flips forward, leaping right over the heads of the fence players, feet leaping feet landing on the turf as he whirls around, tossing the ball in an over the shoulder shot past the goalie. Pass the goalie right into the net. The crowd on the bleachers roars with cheating Allison on her feet along with everyone else except Styles. McCall, get over here, Coach, ca coach called. He trots over to Coach, all eyes on him. Coach, what in the name of God was that? This is a lacrosse fail. Are you trying out for the gymnastics? For the gymnastics team, Scott? No, Coach. Coach, then what the hell was that? Scott, I don't know. I was just trying to make the shot. Coach, well, you made the shot, and guess what? You just made you made starting lineup. The crowd erupts around him as team members slap him on the back and knock on his helmet with their gloves. A delirious happy Scott doesn't even notice Jackson's furious stares. Furious stare, or Styles watching with a varied worry look. Styles' room. Fingers clicking furiously over a keyboard. Isles looked onto his computer screen. Styles bounces from one web page to another. Words and images pop up on screen, flashing across his face. Wolfsbane, silver bullets, lycan, aconite. Drawings of werewolves in different forms, or one mostly human, another massively fur-covered creature, and yet appearing as normal wolf. Image after image, page after page, while through the window outside, the sun can be seen setting on Beacon Hills. A full moon was beginning to rise. Full moon was beginning to rise. As his room darkens, an increasingly panicked Styles watches a sheet of paper come out of his printer, a detailed wood carving of a medieval hunter standing over the body of a werewolf aiming a crossbow at the creature. He pulls out the page, staring at it with a look of, exhilarate, of ex exhilarating fear when someone knocks on the door. Styles practically leaps out of his chair and he rushes to the door, unlocking it to find Scott standing there out in the hall. Get in, he says. You have to see this. I've been reading website, books, all this information. As Scott takes off his jacket, Styles starts grabbing 
printouts from his desk, pulling his computer screen around, dozens of open win dozens of open web pages on it. Scott, how much Adderall have you had today, Styles? A lot. Doesn't matter. Just listen. Scott, is this about the body? Did they find out who did it? Styles, no, they're still questioning people, even Derek Hale. Scott, the guy from the woods? Styles, yes, but that's not it. Scott, then what? So I was, remember that joke the other day? Not a joke any. It's not a joke anymore. The wolf. The bite in the woods. I started doing all this reading and do you even know why a wolf howls? Scott, should I? Styles, it's a signal. When a wolf is alone, it howls. It signal its location to the rest of the pack. So if you were heard howling, that means there's others. Maybe a whole pack of them. Scott, a pack of wolves? Styles, no. Werewolves. Scott. You're seriously wasting my time with this? You know I'm picking up Allison in an hour. Styles, I saw you on the field, Scott. What what you did wasn't just amazing. It was impossible, Scott. So I made a shot. Styles, no, you made an incredible shot. The way you move, the speed, the reflexes. People can't suddenly do that overnight. And then there's the hearing, the senses. the And don't think I haven't noticed that you don't have your inhaler anymore. You haven't used it since the night, Scott. I can't think about this now. We'll talk about tomorrow, Styles. Tomorrow? Don't you get it? The full moon is tonight, Scott. What are you trying to do? I just made starting lineup. I have a date with a girl. I can't believe it. I can't who can't who I can't believe actually wants to go out with me. Scott, everything in my life is somehow perfect. Why are you trying to ruin that, Styles? I'm trying to help. With the full moon, it's going to be hard to resist, and there's no going back. You're cursed, Scott. And it's not only and it's not only the moon that causes you to change. It's also when your bloodlust will be will be at its peak. Scott, bloodlust, the urge to kill. Styles said, "I'm already starting to have the urge to kill." Styles, Styles, you need to hear this. The change can cause can be caused by anger or anything that rouses that rouses your pulse. And I've never seen anyone raise your pulse like Allison does. You have to cancel your date. You have to call her. Styles grabs Scott's jacket, pulling out the cell phone. Scott, what are you doing? Give me that, Styles. I'm just finding her number. Scott, give it to me. Styles looks up to see Scott's eyes flash yellow for a brief second, his voice low and guttural, and yanks the phone out of Styles' hand and shoves him against the wall. Pulling back before striking him, Scott instead lashes out at the desk chair, sending it flying across the room, tossed like it weighed nothing. Then, shock, then shaking with anger, he gazes up. Scott, I didn't mean to do that. He helps. He starts to help Styles up, but his friend flinches back. Scott, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to do that. I have to go. I have to get ready for this party. I'm sorry. Grabbing his jacket, Scott hurries out. Still shaking, Styles gradually stands. He slowly picks up the desk chair, putting it back. But then he pauses. With a shaky hand, he turns to his chair. He turns his chairs on to reveal claw marks. The chair's fabric slashed to ribbons, fade out. End of Act 4.